Hey, Cal fans, and welcome to this Thanksgiving edition of the Football Film Study here on California Golden Blogs. Now, if you could remind me, Cal fans, is there anything that we have to be thankful for as a fan base as we enter the holiday season? I don't know, maybe there's something I've forgotten about in the midst of all the holiday traffic and family visits. You know, maybe some ancient tradition that goes back to the McKinley administration. Oh yeah, we got the frickin' axe, and you can bet that we're going to take a long-awaited victory lap right here in this video. This is going to be kind of a highlight video, but if you want a more in-depth look at the overall strategy of this game, check out my new website, burke18.com, where you can now get individual game write-ups, even if you aren't subscribed to my Patreon site. This video is going to be a lot of fun, because the Bears made a lot of great plays in the big game this year, so here's the rundown. We're looking at three touchdowns, two interceptions, and one stout fourth down stop. Let's get started. Our first highlight comes with less than a minute in the first quarter, with the Bears down 7 to nothing. Up to this point, quarterback Chase Garbers and the Bears had engineered a 13-play, 90-yard drive, moving the ball down to the Cardinals' 7-yard line. Cal's got three tight ends in the game here, and they're running power to the right. This means that left guard Matthew Sendrick here is going to pull across the formation from left to right to add an extra blocker to the play side. Before the snap, the Bears have four blockers to the right of center, and so Sendrick's going to be the fifth. Now, before the snap, these numbers don't look great. As I said, Cal will have five blockers to the play side, but when we look at Stanford's defense, we see that they're geared up to stop the run. They have a total of six defenders in position to get to the ball, so they should be able to outnumber us at the point of attack. This is where our first unheralded big game hero makes his entrance. Check out tight end Gavin Reinwald here. He's responsible for blocking this outside linebacker. As we roll the tape forward, watch how he's able to cross that guy's face, sealing him off to the outside. This is a critical block for two reasons. First, it establishes the right edge of the hole, but second, it's also going to ensure that Stanford has two guys in the same gap. The Cardinal are counting on their cornerback out here to defend the gap outside of Reinwald, but when Reinwald also seals off the outside linebacker to the outside, it leaves Stanford with two guys on the edge and only four guys inside. McCade Mataya is going to control the defensive lineman across from him one-on-one. -on -one. The two Jakes, Kern and Tonjus, are going to combo block from this defensive end up to this linebacker, and Sindrick's going to pull through the hole to take out this safety. Running back Chris Brown then follows him through the lane for a 7-yard gain. Touchdown Bears! The second quarter was a little bit forgettable, so now let's move into the early third quarter. Zeonde Johnson had just nearly picked off a screen pass, putting the Cardinal in 2nd and 10 and in need of a big play. Stanford's lined up in trips right, and they're targeting the middle of the field with two crossing routes. Cal's in cover one, so this is a straight-up man coverage across the board. This coverage also puts a free safety in the deep middle of the field, and so all of Cal's defenders are playing with outside leverage, trying to force their receivers to those help players in the middle of the field. When the defense plays with a single high safety like this, one potential vulnerability is down the seam in between the cornerback and that deep middle safety. Mills also knows that Cal doesn't have their usual free safety playing back there, and so he decides that it's time to attack this scene. Unfortunately for him, unexpected big game hero Daniel Scott is working across the field with the two crossing routes. He reads Mills' eyes all the way, breaks on the ball, and picks it off to keep the Cardinal out of the Bears' side of the field. That brings us to the next Stanford drive. On this play, Cal's initially showing another single high look, and Mills is again going to try to test that seam between Bynum and the deep middle safety. Now, try not to be nauseous, Cal fans, but we have to give some credit to David Shaw here. On this play, Stanford's called a double post pattern, which, if you watched my video last week, is something that USC used against us to great effect. So Stanford's clearly done their homework here. Now, I don't usually talk about the broadcast commentary in these videos, but I do want to address one point, which is the idea that Stanford had a sure touchdown to the inside post here. There's definitely a window on this play, but it's not where the broadcaster said it is. As we can see right here, they think that this should have been floated deep into the outside for a touchdown, but Daniel Scott right here is on the hash and he's bailing at full speed. I did the math on the yardage here, and if the quarterback were to put the ball on the right hash at the 10-yard line, Scott and the receiver would both be about 15 yards from that point. The basic problem for Mills is that to keep the ball away from Hawkins, he has to throw it shallower into the outside, which gives Scott a good angle on the ball. 
to beat Scott, he'd have to throw the ball more vertical and straight downfield, but that'd give Hawkins a better angle to the ball. So in actuality, that window here would close pretty fast with the ball in the air. Stanford's receiver might have won a jump ball, but he's not as open as he looks in this shot. There is an easy window for this receiver on this play, but the ball would already need to be in his hands right about here. The deeper Mills has to throw this ball, the better his throw would have to be to beat both safeties for a completion. So now let's look at what actually happened. On this play, Mills is reading Hawkins. Right here, he sees that his hips are turned toward that inside post receiver and that he's in a crossover run toward that guy, so Mills thinks that he's going to have that seam opening up behind him. Hawkins just does a nice job of reading his eyes, breaking off his run, and undercutting this outside post. That brings us to 7.52 in the fourth quarter with the Bears down by a touchdown, and this plays the culmination of a five-play, 84-yard drive in crunch time. Cal's in an empty set here with three receivers to the right and two to the left. Stanford's playing cover zero at the top of the screen, and offensive coordinator Bo Baldwin has identified an important source of conflict for this inside defensive back. On the one hand, the Cardinal are trying to create an inside-outside bracket with these two defensive backs on these two wide receivers, and so the outside defender's playing with outside leverage, while the inside defender's playing with inside leverage. The conflict comes from how they're handling outside breaking routes by the number three receiver here, because they're asking this defender to both be the inside man in the bracket, and also to cover number three man-to-man -man on any outside breaking route. When the number three receiver runs to the flat, that defender has to attack the line of scrimmage and run with him man-to-man, -man, which takes him away as the inside man in the bracket. At that point, wide receiver Nico Remigio is running an inside breaking post against a defender playing with outside leverage, and Chase Garbers finds him for the easy touchdown. Alright, here's the fun one that we've all been waiting for. There's about a minute and a half left in the game at this point. The Bears are down by three, and they've just driven the ball 75 yards down the field. Cal's in a trips left formation, so they have three wide receivers at the bottom of the screen and one at the top. On this play, Stanford's running cover two man, which is a man coverage with two safeties deep. In this coverage, the man defenders have safety help deep, and so they want to play their receivers with inside leverage, denying easy inside breaking routes like slants and forcing the quarterback to throw quick outside breaking routes to the sidelines, which are long throws and lower percentage. The fact that this is a man coverage is also important because that's going to clear out any defender who has a shot to tackle the scramble that's coming from Garbers. As we run this play forward, we see that the outside wide receiver here is running a post. His cornerback is manned up on him, and so he's going to run with him vertical into the inside. Since this is cover two man, the safety to his side has to stay as deep as the deepest threat to his part of the field, and so he's also going to pick up this post route. This is going to clear out the outside of this coverage. This next bit's been discussed a lot, but one more time, let's look at this block by Remigio to set the edge and let Garbers get outside for the touchdown. Remember that in two man, Remigio's defender's playing him with the inside leverage to take away slants and easy inside breaking routes. On this play, that leverage is going to work against that defender because it's going to give Remigio great leverage to seal him off to the inside, letting Garbers escape around the edge for the touchdown. And finally, here's our last highlight of the game. Stanford's got the ball, and they're trying to drive for a game-winning touchdown with less than a minute to go. They've got fourth and one, and they come out in 11 personnel, with one running back in the backfield and a tight end brought in as an extra blocker for him. Something that's interesting about this play is that Cal isn't lined up to stop the run here. When we include that tight end, Stanford has six run blockers in the box. Cal's playing with two deep safeties to defend the pass, and so they only have six defenders in the box, letting Stanford get a blocker for every defender, which is usually an advantage for the offense. On top of that, Stanford's running this as a zone read, so the quarterback is reading the backside defensive end here, letting the rest of their blockers play six on five against Cal's remaining defenders. Now, at times this season, Cal's interior defensive line has been a little bit maligned on line, but as I've broken down our games, I've never seen them as being the main problem with our defense, and so on this play, they're going to get their due. On this play, look at the push that Luke Beckett gets on Stanford's right guard, knocking him a yard back beyond the line of scrimmage. We also have to give some credit to defensive coordinator Tim DeRuiter here. 
To the left of center, he's called a stunt, bringing Loni Tuailoa down inside of the left guard, while Evan Weaver scrapes to the outside of him. Tuailoa's inside stunt takes away the lane that the running back's trying to hit and makes a pile, and the Bears get the stop and bring home the axe. Alright, that's it for this video. If you want a more thorough write-up of the strategy that went into this game, check out Burke18.com, where you can now get individual game write-ups even without a Patreon subscription. Otherwise, I'll see you here next week for a breakdown of the UCLA game, and until then, Go Bears!